good evening friends amongst us we have justice v ram kumar and as usual we will be taking the session in an interactive form and i will read the question and justice v ram kumar will explain the same issues in a more explicit manner as usual people love to understand from him and that's why on our request which we did receive on whatsapp as well as on the emails etc we keep on requesting and he also is always willing to see to that so the question is at about 11 am on a sunday while a lady aged 27 years was alone in her house a person aged about 38 years and who claimed to be a friend of her husband came asking for her husband she told the person that her husband had gone to the market to purchase some vegetables and fish and would return in half an hour she asked the visitor to be seated and said that she would make some tea in the meanwhile while she was busy making the tea the visitor stealthily came to the kitchen and clasped her from behind intending to outrage her modesty with a loud protest she shook herself free and pushed the intruder who immediately left the house she narrated her bitter experience to her husband who told her that although he knew the visitor the latter was not his friend he asked her to call the police and make a complaint she called the officer in charge of the police station sho for short and narrated the entire incident amounting to an offence punishable under section 354 ipc the sho asked her whether she had any physical or mental disability and she as well as her husband replied in the negative even though the sho was convinced about the commission of the offence and he made a routine entry in the general diary daily diary book about the telephonic information he asked her to go to the police station and give a complaint as the victim was disinclined to do so she sent a letter by post to the district superintendent of police dsp for short narrating the whole incident and stating that the conduct of the sho amounted to refusal to record her information and requested the dsp to investigate the case on receipt of the letter the dsp asked for an explanation from this sho on the following lines why did not the sho treat the telephonic information as one received under section 154 crpc why did not the sho treat the telephonic information as one received under the section 154 crpc why did instead of asking the victim to go to the police station and make a complaint the sho himself did not go to the police go to the house of the victim and do the needful in view of the proviso to section 160 sub clause 1 crpc on the advice taken from the assistant public prosecutor app for short the sho gave the following reply any information given on telephone to the police is not for the purpose of lodging an fir but to request the police to reach the place of occurrence by paras 113 and 14 of siddharth vishisht at the rate manu sharma was a state in city of delhi 2010 volume 6 scc 1 where a telephonic information is received from an unknown person since the procedural formalities such as reducing the information into writing and reading it over to the informant and obtaining his or her signatures on the transcribed information etc cannot be completed the same cannot be treated as an fir right paras 33 to 37 suraji sarkar was state of west bengal 2013 volume 2 scc 146 it is only if the victim lady was mentally or physically disabled so temporarily or permanently should the sho go to her residence and record the information as mandated by clause a of the second proviso to section 1541 crpc here he had ascertained from the victim that she had no dis such disability and she should have gone to the police station and lodged the first information report statement fir for short the proviso to section 161 sub clause 1 crpc exempting certain categories of victims from being required to attend the police station is applicable only during the course of investigation here since the fir has been not been registered there could not be any investigation the supreme court has ruled that registration of an fir is a condition precedent for commencement of an investigation by the para 1 of mahindra versus state of punjab 2001 air sc 2113 and para 25 of shashikant versus cpi air 2000 sc 351 so my questions to you is as follow the question is was the sho justified in taking the legal opinion of the app yes now of course it is a big problem but the problem can fully understood these four questions arise from that 
Now, the S, when the uh, DSP asked for the explanation of the SHO as to why he did not uh, treat the telephonic information as the, as the FIR, then the SHO replied that he had taken the legal opinion of the APP. And uh, as per the legal opinion, he was not bound to do that. So, so he was, now he, we will try to answer the first question. Was the SHO justified in taking the legal opinion of the APP? Now the answer is no. The SHO was not justified in taking the legal advice from the APP in the light of the verdict of the Supreme Court in R. Sarala versus uh, Velu. AIR 2000 Supreme Court 1731 corresponding to 2000 Volume 4 SEC 459. The judges are Justice Katie Thomas and D.P. Mohapatra. Justice Thomas being the author of the judgment. Now, in the above decision, the Apex Court held that uh, at no stage of a case should the investigating officer take the opinion of the assistant public prosecutor except his superior police officer and that the role of the public prosecutor is inside the court and not outside. This is the view taken by the Apex Court. But with due respect, I have my own reservations about that uh, view because uh, the only legally qualified person uh, whom, whom the police officer if, if whoever be the police officer, a police officer comes across during his functional sphere is the public prosecutor. Public prosecutor is the only legally qualified person whom a police officer comes across in his day-to-day -day routine. Now, it is true that public prosecutor's main role is during the trial of the case. But in my humble view, there is nothing wrong if the public prosecutor gives the necessary legal advice to the investigating police officer and even does the wetting of the draft charge sheet, draft police report, in order to avert a rejection of the draft of the police report and even in order to avoid a rejection of the prosecution case itself. That is, otherwise, see, whom will he con con consult? Can he consult a senior advocate of the Supreme Court without a... a, a who, who may not be inclined to give him a free ad legal advice. The only person whom, who will give him a free legal advice and who is legally qualified is the prosecutor. So I don't find anything wrong in the prosecutor giving legal opinion to the police officer during the course of his investigation and even vetting, the, uh, approving the draft police report, draft charge, so that the, uh, he can, the police officer can avert a rejection of the police report by the court. It may be, uh, there may be some many uh, defects in the police report. So in order to avoid a rejection of the police report, the, the poli draft charge can be vetted by the public prosecutor according to me. Now in, in, the, in Kerala state, there is one, one subterfuge adopted in, Ker in the state of Kerala. Sarla versus Velu, the decision which we relied on, which we referred to, is being circumvented by designating the person conducting the prosecution as the additional assistant legal advisor. Assistant legal advisor. He is not called the public prosecutor. He is called the assistant legal advisor so that he can give legal advice, etc. But as per Section 5.3 of the Prevention of Corruption Act, the person conducting the prosecution is called a public prosecutor, not assistant legal advisor. So in the, the, the practice in Kerala also, I cannot agree uh, because he is, the pub, he is deemed to be public prosecutor under Section 5.3 of the um, Prevention of Corruption Act. Therefore, the, the, you cannot uh, uh, have a different label and get over Sarla versus Velu. Of course, Sarla versus Velu may require reconsideration, my humble view. This is my take on this question.